Hey, what's happening everybody? It's Adam here from GIS Express and today I wanted to share with you a nice bit of functionality in Survey123 and it's around instant feedback for your users. Obviously not the type of feedback where we, where we compliment them, you know, and say, hey, you're doing a great job filling out this form. It's more so if we have values that we're expecting or certain ranges in questions or even if somebody's filled in an off-the-wall value and we just want to make sure that the integrity of our data uh, that we're capturing via the Survey123 form is legitimate. Of course, there is a thing in Survey123 called constraints and it's it's really fantastic piece of functionality to have within it where you can write a constraint message but unfortunately for that piece it really only gets flagged when they go to submit it and you're also at the mercy of whatever that constraint message is. So if it's a vague message in a multi-page survey like the one I have here is seven pages, then it can be time consuming and no doubt frustrating, right, for your, for your people to go back and refill that survey. Especially if there's dependent calculations, you know, or dependent groups and repeats and questions on that one constraint, right? They think they, fin they filled out the survey, they're ready to submit it, and then they find out they have to go back and change a bunch of stuff. And let me show you what that looks like. So I have seven pages of surveys here. I have a constraint message built into it on page three. And then you can see as I go to submit, they'll get the custom constraint message, which is calculation for the value in these questions on page, whatever, is out of, ra is out of range. Please review and fix before submitting. Now I know you can go in, you know, to this, right click on page 7 of 7 and it says, okay, page 3, this is my problematic one, this is the one that's out of range, obviously it's out of range if it's zero right now, um, but instant feedback, flagging questions as they're filled in is a great complement uh, to constraints, right, it's a great tool to have in your back pocket, especially if you're dealing with anything related to bill of quantities, bill of materials, anything to do with costs, anything to do with ranges, right? So for instance, say you're a telco and you want to calculate how much, you know, how much each meter of fiber is costing you or you're a local authority and you need to do a piece of work out on site, seeing what's back at the warehouse and seeing how much a particular job is going to cost you in quantities and, you know, money-wise as well. Or even if you're an energy surveyor, needs to see how far outside or inside a range of a typical electricity use is, right? Whatever your use case, if you're dealing in costs or quantities or ranges, this is a good tip to keep in mind. And I think it's quite user-friendly as well. So essentially how it works is, I start filling in values. And you can see here, as I start filling it out, it's gonna give me instant feedback. So this value is in range, this value is out of range. And I have my constraints set up in the back end so that you know when they go to submit okay everything is good but in the meantime you know they can get a kind of visual representation saying okay let's make sure this value is correct before we move on and how I've done that is just by having a little green emoji little green text little red emoji little red text uh, and then I have my values here so let me show you how this works in the actual SLS form so I have my survey form open here, and the ones that I want is on page three, and I've highlighted the rows that I'm using here. Now, you might look at this off the bat and say, Pooh, three, three rows of calculations, that's a bit too much. Um, that is an entirely a matter of personal preference, right? So I just like to break things out. It helps my lizard brain <laughs> comp comprehend what I'm doing and break it down into stages. I think it's easier to troubleshoot as well, but that, you know, I, I'm aware that this, what I'm about to show you could actually be done in one calculation row. It's just, I like to break it out. Particularly if, you know, Survey123 Connect in ArcGIS Online supports uh, up to 1,024 records in an XLS form. So if I have that to play around with, you know, I have space, right? It, it's, uh, it's only 500 if you're uh, accessing Server 123 Connect via portal. Um, but if you do have those rows, you know, I just like to color code everything, but that's just me. Um, you know, I'm well aware that this could exist as, as just one line, <laughs> right? Um, so, you know, feel free. You don't have to take 
what I've done here is, is gospel, right? I, it's just a matter of personal preference. So from here, I have my integer question. I have a decimal. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is put in a note. And this is the value of it, right? So let me get up this here. So you can see my integer is question 132. It's my first quantity. My first spend is beside it. And then this is my note that says total price per unit is. And then I have some HTML formatting here to you know put it in bold and, and make sure everything's running smoothly, right? And then below it, I have a line break, my first emoji, and first font. So to get into the actual calculation, I'd say just ignore this for now unless you're dealing with money, right? So like I have first calc, uh, and it's just to round first spend divided by first quantity and just round it to do two decimal places because I'm dealing in euros. I don't want any kind of like, it'll look a bit weird if I had 100 euro dot zero, 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 right? So from here then, I have my first emoji and my first font. And this is this one here. So this little green emoji, this green font here. And how to do that calculation then? So I'll bring it up to this one. So I'm going to open up. There's two if statements involved. So I have my general if statement, if first calc, right? Which is this calculation here, rounded to two decimal places. And now I have a nested if statement. If first calc is less than 0 0.5. So in this one, I have my range 10 cent to 50 cent, which corresponds to 0 0.1, 0 0.5 respectively. So I have, if it's less than 0 0.5, or if it's greater than 0 0.1, and then I have my corresponding emojis, right? So we'll touch on that in a second. It's to do with HTML emoji references. But from here, this is my value a say, right? This is the greater one. Now, they can be switched. You just need to keep in mind as you're diving through, okay, green is actually corresponding to what I want to display as green, right? Or my emojis are matching up. But so I have 0 0.5 and then I have a little uh, green emoji here to say, okay, it's within range, it's without of range, okay? And all I've done here then to capture the emojis uh, there's numerous different websites that'll do this for you. I like w3schools.com just because it has so many and I can always click on it and try it so it'll bring me to a separate window but I can copy and paste uh, whatever value it is in there, right? So even if I wanted to go in, I want to change this to a line. All I'm looking for is this at symbol pound sign and then the code that follows it. So I'm going to go here and I'll get up my server 123 connect from here, all I'm saying is, okay, well, actually, if it's, if it's within range, I'm just going to delete this out, put a little line symbol. Obviously, you probably don't want to get too wild with it. And if it's in a professional setting and put in a whole bunch of line emojis, maybe you do. I don't know. But uh, from here, that's my emoji sorted. And then from here, I've just rinsed and repeated uh, what I've done here. And I've just broken it out again, emojis, text. And the exact same if statement. So if it's within this range, within this value A, value B, then if it's green, this value is in range. If it's out of range, I say font color is red, this value is out of range. That is it for instant feedback. It is just separate rows within your XLS form. And I'm going in and saying, okay, I just want to go to question three now. I don't want to say that's 20, that's 5, and my little line emoji appears here. So it really is quite flexible. I think it's quite user-friendly as well, just to get that instant feedback just before they publish. Make sure everything is correct. Uh, and yeah, go from there. That, that is instant feedback. I first came across this at uh, Doug Browning on an Esri blog. Uh, I'll link that in the description below as well if you want to see what he wrote before. Um, so yeah, just hopefully that helps. If you'd like the XLS form that you see on screen here, uh, if you'd like to get the actual calculations and stuff, you can drop me an email at adam, A-D-A-M, at gis-express.com. We offer premium training courses. I'd love to hear from you. Even if you just say, hey, this video helped me, or conversely, if this video <laughs> was absolute rubbish, then I'd love to hear from you either way. So thanks for watching. Hopefully it helps.